Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Gift Ebenu and today we'll be looking at how we can deploy a grid song site. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video. I have a surprise for you. Yeah, I'm just kidding. But make sure you stick around to the end of the video and I hope you have fun watching this. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future content from me. So let's get right into it, shall we? So, for this video, we'll be building a gridsum app and then deploying it to Netlify. So, what is Netlify? Netlify is simply a service you use for deploying your static sites or static web apps, and it is really easy to get started with. It helps you deploy your site in seconds. All you just need to do is connect your repository. Either you have your code hosted in GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket, then you configure a few build settings, and the last step is to deploy your website, and there you have it. We'll be deploying a Gridsome application to Netlify. So let's head over to the Gridsome website. So Gridsome is BDJS Power Static Site Generator that we can use to build Jamstack websites and PWAs. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Gridsum starters. These are starters that are already um, created for you to either clone and get started with or customize to fit your own purpose. So shameless plug here, I created a starter which I'll be using for this tutorial. So I created this with some blog starter is basically a starter with a minimalistic design, not so much going on. It's a blog, right? So we don't have so much going on, right? So let's take a look at it and see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like. So we are going to clone this and customize it to fit our needs and then deploy it to Netlify. So let's so let's get started with that. So I'll head right into my terminal. Head the back to my desktop because that's where I went once the project to be stored. And then from the Gridsum website, I already have a command to install this project, so which I'm going to go ahead and do. So make sure you have Gridsum server installed on your computer, or if you don't. If you already have that, then you can skip this step. But if you don't, just go ahead and npm install global with some CLI because we'll be using the CLI to create our some project. So because I already have that installed, I'm just going to go ahead and move on to the next command. So I just need to wait a few minutes for that to get installed. And once that is installed, we can go ahead and look at the app to see what it looks like. So after running the command, we now have a uh, minimal blog installed so the next step we have to be cd into it that's going to be directory just follow the commands that we have listed above and then go ahead and run grid some develops for local development now we just want to see what it looks like we we'll go ahead and run grid some develop and then when we're ready to build for production and deploy we run grid some build so let's run quick some develop now. Uh, 
after the command is done, you see that it locals 88, 88. So we'll just go ahead and navigate to this to see what we'll have. Awesome. So we have our app running on local OS 8080, and this looks exactly like the data we just cloned. So we just have, uh, because it's designed to be minimal, we just, we just have two blog posts already here. And if you click on read more, you have to see the content of the blog posts right here and then you can go back so this is just a minimal listic design for a blog and the idea is to have this running on our local and then push it to our github and then deploy to netlify so let's go ahead and go through the, those steps so i'm going to create go to github This is my GitHub. I'm just going to go ahead and create a new repo. Just going to go ahead and create a new repository so we can push our code up to our repo. Now that we have this page, we'll go ahead and give our repo a name. Let me call this repo. And also give it a description. This is optional, so I'll just go ahead and say a So because I want it to be a public repository, I'm just going to give this as public. And then I don't need to initialize the repo, the readme for it. So I'll just go ahead and create this repo. Over to our terminal. I'm just going to go ahead and close it. So right now, our local folder is not in sync with what we have on GitHub. So we'll be trying to fix that by running a few commands. So the first thing you do is to check if this is already a Git repository. So how to do that is by saying git status, for instance, git status, and then get this message, not a Git repository. So now we have to initialize a new Git repository. So to do that, you run Git init. Now that we've initialized a, a, this folder as a Git repository, you can see a difference with this master branch now displayed. So let's go ahead and git status once more to see the status of our files. So now our files have not been added. So we need to go ahead and add that using git add first of to add all the files. Now that we added, let's git status one more time to see the status of our files. Now our files have been added. Now to push this up to GitHub, we need to commit these files. So to do that, just go ahead and run git commit dash n then the message to add new blog now that we've committed this we need to add this folder as a remote to the one we have on github so here's the command to do that git remote add origin from the link of the repo so i'll just go ahead and copy that and paste that on our terminal to add it Awesome, now we've added it. Make sure this has been added. We can run git 
minutes by screen to check. Now we have our origin set as repo created on GitHub. So now I can go ahead and push to master. Click on my password. This is optional if you don't have that set up. Awesome. Now we push to GitHub. So let's go back to GitHub and see if our files have been uploaded. Just by just refreshing this page. Yay, now we can see that our files have been uploaded to GitHub and everything is working fine. So the next step now is to deploy this repo to Netlify. So let's head back to Netlify and see how we can go about that. So once you go to Netlify, like I mentioned earlier, you just need a few steps to deploy your website to Netlify. The first step being you should connect your repository, whether it is in, on GitHub, on GitLab, or GitPocket, it doesn't really matter. After connecting your repo, you had a couple of build settings that would enable Netlify to build your files for deployment. And then the last step, your site is deployed. So let's go over the steps one after the other. So the first thing you need to do is to sign up if you don't have an account with Netlify. But because I have an account, I'll just go ahead and log in. Awesome. So now that I'm logged in to Netlify's dashboard, this is Netlify's dashboard as you can see. All these are the sites that have already deployed to Netlify. And now the next thing for us to do is to create a new site from Git. Right now it's time for us to deploy our site to Netlify by clicking on this new site from Git button. So actually there are two ways you can deploy to Netlify. There is another way in which you just drag, you can just drag the folder, entire folder from your desktop to Netlify and that is called the drag and drop method. But that is not what we're, we're, we're using for this tutorial. We're using Git because we want to leverage the continuous deployment that comes with Netlify. So what's awesome is once you've connected your repo, whenever you push to GitHub, whenever you commit or whenever you read the PR, Netlify automatically deploys your application for you so you can test without pushing to master does that make sense that is why i feel like doing it from git is a better option so now let's go ahead and create a new site from git now you'll be asked to connect your um, repo for continuous deployment like i mentioned earlier so because we use GitHub, we just go ahead and click on GitHub. If you've not authorized Netlify to have access to your GitHub repo, you'll be asked to authorize. But because I've already done that, I did no need to do that again. So now these are all my repositories from GitHub. We just go ahead and look for the one we want to deploy, which is blog. Netlify. Now here we have it, so we just go ahead and click on it. Now the next step, like I explained earlier, is for you to configure your build settings. So these settings will be used whenever your site is deployed. And for Gritson, which is the static site generator we are using, the build command is Gritson build. And the publish directory, that is where we want our build files to be saved in, is called the post. So now that we have that set up, and we also have the branch, the master branch set as deployed, this means that you're only allowed, or Netlify is only allowed to deploy the master branch. So now go ahead and click on deploy sites. 
and it's just take a few seconds and see here site deploy is in progress so we can just wait a few seconds and by the way i actually really love the custom names that notify gives your app actually if you decide you, you don't like it you can change it i'll be showing you how to do that in a few minutes but let's go over this dashboard as you can see our deploy is in progress and it is enqueued you can go to deploy details to see what's running so netlify is just going to run the command you specified which is with some wood and that is what is currently happening now so you just give it a few minutes to run let's head back to the dashboard awesome you can see our site has been deployed our site has been published so let's see what it looks like Yay, this is our site now deployed to Netlify and we have everything working as expected. These are the two posts that we added. You can click on read more and go back. So awesome. Right now we have our site deployed to Netlify, but that's not the end. There are all other things you can also customize if you want to. First one being you setting up a custom domain. So if you already have a domain that you bought and you want to use for your website, it's really easy to set it up by just clicking on this button. You add your custom domain and Netlify verifies it and Netlify will switch that in place of this. So that is how to add a custom domain and then for HTTPS, all you just need to do after setting up your custom domain, a few configurations you be asked from you, and then you can have HTTPS with your website. Isn't that really cool? So now let's see how we can change this name. I really love it, but let's see how to change Elastic Shore. So we can just change this. Awesome. So as you can see here now, our site name has been changed, has been changed. Also, the name of the project has also be, been changed. So let's go ahead and try it out if it still works as expected. Mm, yes, it does. So that is how you deploy to Netlify. Shameless plug again, Netlify also has other services that you can leverage some of which include the Netlify functions. So if you're trying to build um, with serverless, this is something you might want to take a look at. It is awesome. I haven't tried it out yet, but I'll be doing so in a couple of weeks and I'm really excited about it. And then there's identity. This helps with authentication and authorization for your apps. There is Netlify form, which I really love. You can just add a form to your website without any reason. There is large media and there's speed testing. I haven't tried speed testing out, but these are just other awesome services that Netlify offers that you can also leverage. And all this comes for free at a certain limit. The certain limit for a developer, I know it's free. So, yeah. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. Our aim was to deploy a Gritson website to Netlify and we've achieved that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and now I'm how to deploy to Netlify. Don't forget to like this video and also subscribe to my channel.